So today, I'll be going over how you can run C++ files in Vim. So first, I just want to take a look at the code that we'll be using. It's located here. At the top, I have some code for detecting operating system, which is pretty important for performing some commands, but is really just a side option. And down here, I have a kind of utility command that allows me to wrap functions and pass them into the terminal. Um, this only works with NeoVim because NeoVim is terminal support, and it might work with Vim, but I've only tested it on NeoVim. Essentially, what it allows you to do is it allows you to split open a buffer and at the same time put in a command. And we'll be using that down here where we create a function, or rather create a command that allows us to uh, compile our C++ code and then immediately run the executable. And all this does is it takes our current file name, which is represented by this percent sign, and allows us to pass it in through printf into our command string, which is then passed up into our terminal wrapper command. And the terminal wrapper has a couple of options. If we go to the bottom of the page, you kind of see the options that we have, which are split term style and split term resize command. Split term style basically allows you to choose whether you want a terminal window to split horizontally or vertically. And to give you an example of what that looks like, a vertical split uh, can be created with this, where it just splits across vertically, and a horizontal split can be created with this. So choose whichever one floats your boat more. I personally like vertical because it gives me more space, and I personally don't need all the space going to the right. Not only that, you can also choose a resize command to determine how wide your terminal should be. For example, if I have resize 6, then it'll only be 6 lines tall, which is a good size because I don't want it taking up half of my screen like the way this does. So you can customize that with this command. Now to see where this is all run, you can go back to the terminal wrapper. You can see that I run my I run the split term resize command right before I call the terminal command. And additionally, up here, I also I have a default value of split term style set to vertical, and I also let a buffer command be run for whichever style you prefer. Now, to go over how remappings work, a remapping can first include an auto command, which basically allows you to define a file type, in this case, of which, re which file types the remapping will occur on. In this case, I only want it to occur when the file type is a C++ file. If it is a C++ file, I'll proceed to run this command. And all that does is it maps the key F6 to compile and run. And compile and run is obviously the command that I defined here, which calls term wrapper. And all compile and run does is it passes in a command to compile and run the C++ file. Down here I have a couple of commands that you can use to compile and run in place. So these technically don't open up a new window. And we'll see examples of all these later, but I have these mapped to particular leader keys, uh, leader key mappings, which means that I can type a sequence of keys in order to activate these commands. Now, for this case, I'm not actually going to be using F6. Instead, I'll use leader FW. This group of commands looks very similar to this group of commands. The only difference is that this group will use the default executable, while these will customize the executable to the truncated file name. So, for example, you have xyz.cpp, then you'll end up with xyz instead of a, which is the default behavior. And over here at the bottom, we obviously have our options. Now, if I just open up a C++ file, um, you can kind of see the example code that I have here. All I'm doing here is I'm taking in a number, and then simply printing out a loop up till that number. So to demonstrate the split window buffer, I can do space FW, and it'll open up a window. I can type in a number, and it works just like that. Now, typing any key will delete this buffer. For example, if I hit the A key, it deletes the buffer. Now, if I just run that again, 
maybe pass in 5. If I go into normal mode by hitting escape, I'm able to navigate around, maybe perform visual selections, and yank parts of it as well. And I can always go back into insert mode and then hit enter or any other key to delete the buffer. And now for some other methods, for example, a mode specific to macOS is my space fn command, which will actually open up a separate terminal window and allow you to type in code there. Uh, type in whatever or copy paste whatever input you want. Right, so it works just as expected. And the final way you can build a C++ file is with space fb, which will build it inside here. Now you can kind of see that there's an issue because it never prompted me for input. And the thing with this last method is that you cannot put standard input. So I'll change int n to be defined as 10 hard-coded and now we can see that it'll work. Right, but it cannot take in standard input. So that's the only problem. So I don't recommend you use that way. I recommend you use either space fw, which is great, or just the one that opens up a new terminal. Now there's one thing I haven't shown you guys yet, and that's in my config folder. And that is the compile and run with file command. Now you might know that the normal command has to take an input from standard in. Now, compile and run with file allows you to treat a file as standard input. For example, if you have an, a file called input.txt, you can treat that as the standard input to a file so as not to use free open inside your code. But to give an example of how this would work, I have a file called input, and that's simply a one line file with five as the input. Now if I go back into my code, now if I change the int n to something that's taken in by standard input, we'll have to provide input to this function. But watch what happens when I use compile and run with file and provide a file as input. So now I have to put it in quotes. And what happens is it automatically reads standard input from the file and treats it as a standard input to the program. That's pretty helpful if you want to run the same code a lot of times. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more.